Evans was targeted nine times. He only had two catches. Why is it that Tom and Mike seem to be out of sync at this point? It's a good question. You know, some of them were defensive calls. Some of them we just missed it here and there. You know, we got to get that fixed. We got to get them back on the same page. You know, that that struggle it showed up yesterday. Not saying it was anybody's fault, but it did show up yesterday and showed up a few games before that. You know, we got to get that taken care of. That's crucial for our success. Not necessarily them two, it's quite a few other people over there as well. We just got to get on the same page, and we're not on the same page in the shows. Or close it out. Not been a great year for Todd Bowles. Not a great weekend for him either. Not putting the ball in uh, Tom Brady's some hands down are, the stretch. Some people are great coordinators and should not be head coaches. Like, I always sure. felt that about Norv Turner. Nathaniel Hackett? Uh, possi very possibly Nathaniel Hackett. Um, Norv Turner, uh, he's the poster but, boy. But no, Norv Turner is the poster boy for that. Norv Turner is as good an offensive coordinator, play caller, as there's been in the history of the NFL was not a good head coach. Josh, Speaking as somebody who's a fan of Washington. Yeah. Josh McDaniels, jury's yeah. still out, but that might, you know, like, didn't work out in Denver. Great in New England for so many years. So far, Rocky Road in Las Vegas. So, right, some people are just, I, I feel like Todd Bowles might be one of those guys, too, because he's a great defensive coordinator. Yeah. Give the man credit. Like, the, his defenses see. play, but, like, they handed you Tom Brady. Not giving the ball to Brady at the end of the game because you're worried about him throwing an interception. Like, it's Tom Brady, That's the greatest crazy. quarterback of like, all time against all the time. Cleveland defense. Of all time. Of all time. So that was a I, I mean, tricky, honestly, but... and I think the jury's still out as to whether Byron Lefwich should be a coordinator. Yes. I mean, like, again, well, their offense is like, they really miss Bruce Arians. They Let's do. just they say do. that. But the question here about keep it open, like we did last night uh, <laughs> after the yeah, Tesher Rams. Yeah, you definitely did last night. Oh, uh, yeah. Or close it out. Uh, Who's it's, our first it's, one? Well, it's Mike Evans, and it's basically, ah. are you benching them for this week, just this week, or right. are you riding with them? And Matthew, are you keeping it open with Mike Evans? Guys that you've normally been starting, obviously, so yes. keep it open or close it out. I'm going to keep it open. Now, I reserve the I reserve the right to change this uh, in the first hour of uh, <laughs> Fantasy Bowl pregame on Sunday. Okay. I'm only guaranteeing Hedging. that I'll be here for the first hour. <laughs> the, the second hour is is uh, you know still up for debate, but. Uh, I'm going to keep it open, especially because we don't know if Marshawn Lattimore is going to play in this one. He missed Bingo. he missed the game against San Francisco. He has struggled traditionally against San Francisco against the Saints, but that has always been with Marshawn Lattimore playing. You know, basically, just seem Lattimore seems to always have Evans' number. Like the career numbers of Evans versus Lattimore is not good, right? I mean, like he's got I think. Other than that, that one September 2018 game, I think he's got one touchdown against Lattimore yeah. uh, in the past 11 games. But uh, but with Lattimore potentially missing this game, and it's the Monday night game, so we may not know. I don't know. To me, I'm betting on talent. I'm betting on volume and talent. Mm -hmm. Since week seven, he's averaging over 10 targets a game. Mm -hmm. It just They haven't connected. You know, the fact that Todd Bowles is being asked about it, make no mistake, Tom Brady's aware of it. Mike mm -hmm. Evans aware of it. Brady is one of those guys that sort of likes to always feed his guys. Like, I'm keeping it open with Mike Evans. Now, in Australia, we have a saying that when you own someone, you make them your bunny. So, for instance, like me and our producer, Brian Rubin, we play table tennis a lot, and I always beat him. So, Brian's like my bunny. Right. It's like, the famous one is, is cricket. Dad, it's only for our Australian audience, but Daryl uh, Cullinan was Shane Warne's bunny. So, Marshall and Lattimore has kind of made Mike Evans his bunny. You're buying into that, Lawrence. So you and by the way, I would also like down. to offer that if you would like Brian Rubin to be your bunny, it's, he's available. <laughs> like I that, we can make him, that Do I got to beat him in ping pong? Yeah, but you can do that. Right. You can yeah, do that yeah. I, I got that. Pretty so, much anything. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, you know, just he, whatever. He's sort of the show bunny. The, uh, um, the, 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 the bad of it is uh, Mike bunny. Evans. <laughs> the bad bunny. The bad of this is Mike Evans averaging only three catches in 41 over the last three games. But you mentioned the targets. In, the, in four of the last five, he's seen at least nine targets. And, again, I'll say this. I'm going to keep this open. Right, but yeah. it's gonna be sippy sips. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna keep it open. But if Marshawn Lattimore end up playing, I'm closing it. Not because he gonna shut him down, because they gonna get to scrapping and they ain't gonna finish the game. They might not. He, <laughs> That's he has, true. This so is I true. Mean, <laughs> Mike Evans has been ejected from previous games against the Saints because him and Marshawn <laughs> Lattimore get like into it. Like you on festival pregame on uh, Sunday, I get ejected halfway through. I I might just start a fight with Michael Smith <laughs> yeah. so I get thrown out for yeah. the second half. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, I mean, I might just do yeah. that. I might, you know, like, talking like, about get cricket. His face. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I might just get in his face. And, <laughs> you know, HR will have to separate us, and then, you know, I get to go watch my kid play. Um, you know, like, I'll pull a, I'll pull a Melvin Gordon. I'll fumble. You know what I mean? Maybe <laughs> now I'm, I'm on the Chiefs. Right. Now I'm on the Chiefs. Exactly. I, I might curse. Maybe I'll curse on yeah, air or something kind of, like that. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I, I got I got a couple of days to, to formulate a game plan. Just let me know. Let me know what you're going to do. All right, Lawrence. Yeah. Just be on standby. That's all I'm asking. I think the Mike Evans thing is a little bit overblown this season just because outside of the touchdowns, which are more fluky, right. he's been fine. He's on pace for similar yards, mm-hmm. receptions, all of that. Yep, the yep, touchdowns, yep. it's a worse offense. That's the problem. Yep. But the touchdowns, I think, will come Again, from Mike Evans. Again, right. I'm always – talent and opportunity. We know Mike Evans is super talented. Tom Brady's still super talented, by the way, and he's getting the opportunity. It hasn't cashed in. We know Brady's been unlucky with the touchdowns just overall – especially given the amount of times he's passing it. We saw a big Chris Godwin game last week. I think, especially if Lattimore's out, I think Evans actually potentially could have a big game on Monday night. Yep, okay. They need something to make that game interesting. They do. now, Especially bit... in states where betting isn't legal. Yes. Now, right. I'm a bit more worried about Deontay Johnson-Lawrence, who has a relatively favorable matchup against Atlanta, but has really underperformed so far this year, keeping it open or closing it out on Deontay. It is Atlanta. You start everybody against Atlanta. But for this one, I'm keeping it closed. I would not have been with Matthew last night taking them shots of fireball because yeah. my tab would have well, been so closed on this. I can't, I can't deal with the fact that Deontay Johnson is the third leading receiver as far as yards go, despite the fact that he leads the team in reception. So that means he's getting these receptions. Just here, get me right here. You got me. You got Nah, man, I'm keeping this closed. George Pickens is the guy now. And, and Frymuth is doing his thing too. So NFL players... The, the, you know when the there last time Deontay Johnson has scored a touchdown? <laughs> oh, when is week Matthew? seventeen of last year? Sure, that's not like mm. there. Like, w- take a look at this list. Take a look at this list here on your screen of Pittsburgh Steelers, current Pittsburgh Steelers that have scored a touchdown Ooh. more recently than Deontay James Johnson. James Washington. Wow. James Washington. Derek Wash. Yes, Derek. Not, Derek not even Watt. TJ. Is he related to JJ? Yes. <laughs> Minka Fitzpatrick. Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> Minka. Uh, right? I mean, like, Benny Snell, like, right. I mean, like, you just, some of them are yeah, obvious. Like, man. Chase Claypool's on the Bears. <laughs> and he even has scored a touchdown more recently than Deontay Derek Johnson. Watts the one. You know, I mean, That's Derek Watt, I mean, like, Minka's pretty tough. Minka's strange. pretty tough. I mean, like, I mean, really, James like, I Washington. Think, yeah. Yes. James Washington. <laughs> right. And so, um, some other players just in the NFL that have scored a touchdown more recently than Deontay Johnson. Currently retired Danny Amendola Uh-oh. has scored a touchdown more recently than Deontay yeah. Johnson. Edo Smith. My boy, Edo. <laughs> Wait, I wonder what he's doing right, right now. He's, uh, I'll tell you what he's not doing. He the ball playing in the NFL. NFL. He, he ain't getting no touchdowns. He's not getting any touchdowns, and yet he still has seen the end zone more recently That's why. than Deontay Johnson. Edo Smith of your beloved, uh, your beloved Falcons. What Freddie Swain <laughs> has scored more recently. Big Jaquan friend. Hardy. Hard, hard knock knocks super, guy. Hard knock oh. superstar Jaquan Hardy. In week 18 of last year, he scored a touchdown more recently. But here's the all-time favorite. Le'Veon Bell. The ghost <laughs> hey. of Le'Veon Bell has scored Shout a touchdown. Shout out to Le'Veon yeah, Bell. Exactly. Ro- between, between rap albums and boxing matches, Le'Veon Bell has still managed to score a touchdown <laughs> more recently than Deontay Johnson. That's where we are. That's Man. where we are as a society today. I, it's unbelievable, and you're like, well, he's just not getting any any uh, targets. Mm-hmm. Oh no, 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 he's had over 50 targets. <laughs> he's gotten many opportunities, many opportunities to score touchdowns, and yet he's not been able to do so. Yeah. Not once this entire year. Not in week 18 of last year. Like, That's I wild. mean, it's um. They even gave him the extra week. He still couldn't do it. Huh? We started a GoFundMe. It hasn't <laughs> happened. We're holding a telethon for it. It doesn't happen. It doesn't. You understand? I mean, like it's like like he like I, I don't. We're we're um we are we are making sacrificial uh you know to to the gods. We are praying to you know whatever deity you you uh you pray to. We have made you know sacrifices to every single one of them, trying to get Deontay Johnson to the end zone. He, he, like even even Michael Pittman last week. Michael yeah. Pittman was like. Oh man, like I can't be like that. Even all score a <laughs> touchdown, fine. Like you know, I mean, what's like, the backup tight end from the Dolphins? Uh, Smythe. Durham There's- Smythe. <laughs> Durham Smythe. Like I'll do it. I. Everybody I mean, gets touchdowns. Everyone, touchdown. everyone has scored. You want George Pickens over him? Rest yeah. of the way. 
No. Oh yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes, yeah. I do. Oh yeah, yes. I thought you meant do I do I not do I want yeah. Um I, th- I thought you were asking me the reverse. No, yes, give me George Pickens okay. over Deontay Johnson. I mean, look, here's the thing. George Pickens, 60 targets, 107.4 fantasy points on PPR basis. Deontay Johnson, 92. Like, literally like 50% more targets, 107.8 PPR points. They have the Sweet. exact same number of, of, of fantasy points, despite the fact Johnson has 32 more targets on the season. He's had single-digit fantasy points in five of the last six games. I am closing it out. He's my uh, wide receiver 33 this week, outside my top 30. Don't like him on the road in Atlanta, and I'll tell you why. Because everyone else, we've done everything possible to get him into the end zone until this. I'm going on national television. I am saying I am benching him against your crappy Falcons. <laughs> and so by doing that... And that's that, how you know. And by doing that, that means he will go off. Because if I recommended, if I said stick yes. with him, he would continue to stink. Yes. But because, <laughs> put in the but because <laughs> I am yes. finally saying I'm out, this, and, and if this doesn't do it, I don't know what to do, guys. But I'm out. I'm out, on, I'm out yeah, on Deontay man. Johnson. There's, there's only so many, you know, 8.6 games I can take. I'm a man. <laughs> oh, man. I I'm a man. I'm, I'm a man. I won't take 8.6. Lawrence, Gabe Davis gets a tough matchup against New England. On Thursday night, you're shutting it, you're closing it out on Gabe Davis, who's been uh, very inconsistent. Yeah, I'm closing this one out. I, I, I think I know how Matthew going to feel about this one, but it, like, yeah, there you go. The last five games, 35, 33, 93, 68. And it's way too many 30s up in there for me, especially against this defense. Yes, this defense just got lit up by Kirk Cousins and uh, Justin Jefferson and the Vikings. But and that, I'm feeling Yes. And Adam Eden. And he scored a touchdown. But, you know, we noticed the NFL. That could be an anomaly. You got a uh, low uh, over-under in this game, too. So, he was outdone by Isaiah McKenzie last week. So, that could happen from time to time. Also, he could have a 79-yard touchdown. But I'm not making on it this week. I'm closing it. Here's the thing. Uh, in games in which he scores a touchdown, he's averaging 22 fantasy points per game. 22.2 to be specific. Games he doesn't score a touchdown, 6.6. Yeah. So really, it's going to come down to like how lucky do you feel do you think he gets in the end zone here. But what I'm going to tell you here, and I'm going to tell both of you guys this, and I'm going to tell America this. <laughs> Here's the thing on Gabe Davis. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Talk to you, Look, uh, it, Talk to I've America. said this before. Gabe Davis is East Coast Mike Williams. You right. cannot do this. You cannot. Uh, is this a good matchup? Is this a, it, it's, it doesn't matter the matchup. It, He's, he, he is matchup proof, as is Josh Allen. We've seen him have big games and, and, and awful matchups. We've seen him completely lay an egg in great matchups. Right. Doesn't matter. So, my point here is what I'm going to say is, is that if you are closing it out on Gabe Davis, you're yeah. closing it out for the year. Yeah. For Again, sure. you yeah, cannot yeah. sit there and say, like, I yeah. think this is a Gabe Davis week. I think it's not. Yeah. You either have to always start him and never yeah. question it, or always bench him and not pull your hair out yes. when he goes off. Because there's a chance. There's a chance that he catches, you know, yeah. two balls for 140 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> he like is. he's he's got that kind of ability. He's also got the, you know, you know, three for 38 kind of yeah. ability. Oof. So um, I I'm probably still sticking with him because I've just sort of made my bed with Gabe Davis, and I'm like I'm starting him. But I will say he comes in at wide receiver 35. Yeah. I mean, like in terms of where I rank, like there's obviously a lot more risk with him. Yeah. yeah you know, it's it's a very risk reward play. So, but I'm just saying to you guys, if you're closing them out, you're closing yeah. them out for uh, the yeah, year. Yeah, I'm, I'm always a game closer out. outer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so far that's been that's been uh, better for you than for me. Yeah. Um, it's like yeah. it's a philosophical well, thing. It's like kind of if you're all in, if you like the film Interstellar, and sure. or and you're all in on like the magical bookshelf, right? Bookcase, they're all, you're out on Interstellar. And you're like, no, this movie's garbage. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Is you're either Gabe Davis in or Gabe yeah, Davis yeah, out, yeah. and you just got to stick that way. That, you can't that game he went from, like Interstellar. Yeah, can you explain the ending of that one too? No, absolutely not. <laughs> no. It's like the <laughs> Matrix Revolution. It's like, I, yeah, if I was to explain I was just going to ask you. I, you can we just plan. do a segment of you explaining <laughs> the ending and b- ruining the ending of all Christopher Nolan movies? Cause yes. I. I they drive me nuts because I'm like, this is super interesting, super interesting. Super- Wait, what? What does that mean? I still don't understand how DiCaprio got out of limbo in in- Inception. He just like, kind of woke up. Well, yeah, I just and what, it, whatever, and it's spinning and does it's and it's slightly and you're. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> well, that's kind of the same feeling. Crazy that's the, the same, same way with different. Gabriel Davis. Yeah. But yeah. I agree with what you're saying though. Like you in or you out of it. Right. Exactly. I don't think stats matter. 
I don't think matchup nah, matters for me. No, he don't. He's matchup agnostic. Now, another, a guy who's probably not matchup agnostic as we pivot from Leonardo DiCaprio to Darius Slayton. Sure. Matthew, keeping it open or closing it out on Slayton against your commanders? Yeah, I'm closing it out on oh. Darius Slayton. He's had one game with more than five receptions in a single game. Since week nine, my commanders, you know what they've done? They've taken command. <laughs> they've taken command. Really exactly. Really they're, they're, like, they're like the Cheshire Rams. They're like the pro football version of Cheshire Rams coming on at the right time, just gaining steam and momentum. Uh, they've been a five. really good defense. They are on the road at New York, and yet they're two-and-a-half-point favorites. They're Do you legit. remember the last time, Jay? You might know this. When was the last time Washington was a favorite on the road? Yeah, not, not that, one that comes what, to immediately. Yeah, memory. I was going to say, what, what's been more recent? Washington favorite on the road it, yeah. or Deontay Johnson scoring a touchdown? Maybe the RJ3 season. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. dudes. So I, I just, Slayton for me, um, you know, like the, the positives here are that like, you know, last four weeks he's gotten a 21% target share. He's a big play waiting to happen. But I also think that they're limited in, uh, they're, they're limited in their, uh, in their passing attack. This is a tough matchup against, against my commanders here. The over under is 40 and a half. Like, mm-hmm. we expect this to be a low-scoring game. My expectation is from New York, especially given the defense. It's a lot of Saquon Barkley. I think this is a grinded-out game between both teams. And they may take a deep shot or two to Darius Slayton, but I'm going to close it out on him against my commanders. He needs that one big play. I'm not convinced he gets it. Yeah, so I, I actually like Darius Slayton as a player, but I got to close it for this week. Because if I'm going to close it on Gabe Davis, I'm going to close it on the guy who's like Gabe, Diet Gabe Davis. Like he, like Diet you said, Gabe Davis. He need that big Diet play. Davis. Yeah. Diet <laughs> Davis. Yeah, so he, he, he's going to need that big play. And he could he get it? Hell yeah, he could get it. But I'm not waiting around on that on a game that has an over-under right. of 40 and a half. So um, I got to close it. But I'll holler at you next week, Slay. Maybe we'll open that back up. So. All right. Back up. All right. The most interesting name to me on this list, maybe not for keep it open, close it. I think you keep it open on this guy. But just long-term outlook. Damian Pierce, who has completely disappeared, yeah. uh, like all rationale disappeared in the Interstellar. Damian Pierce uh, just hasn't done anything for two weeks in a row. Now he gets the Cleveland run defense, which famously allows everyone to cook. Yeah. Keeping it open on Damian Pierce Lawrence. Oh, man. I, I didn't even decide this until like 30 seconds ago, man, because them last two Same games. Your head the whole yeah. time? Yeah. Last two games is ugly. And watching Kyle Allen play quarterback last week, he had the ball back there like this. He's shaking like – so they, the, the defense only has to focus on Damian Pierce, right? Then when they had a – when they finally got close to scoring, they finally dragged themselves up there, um, Dare Ogunbowale gets the touchdown. And they were still in the game because Damian Pierce played after that, right? That – ah, oh, man. What's going on there? Um, I, mean, I, I, I know I, it's I, Cleveland. I think they might be taken, but um, I'm closing. I mean, I, you know, but I'm, I'm closing. keeping it open. It's, I'm it's, absolutely I keeping it open. I'm keeping it open. Damian Pierce is too talented. <laughs> this matchup is too good. He's actually running back 13 for me. Browns give up the second most fantasy points per game to opposing running backs. Uh, this is a guy who, from weeks three through ten, had 12 or more fantasy points in every single week. I get it. Under five fantasy points each of the last two weeks. This matchup is too good. The volume is too good there. Uh, for me to to fade Damian Pierce here, I think they got enough look at Kyle Allen. Like, oh, we don't want that guy throwing, uh, you know. And and also, by the way, um, so this is going to be Deshaun Watson's first game. Bingo. And, and I I am the, the the Texans have played sort of sneaky defense so far this year. Like they haven't been awful. They, no, I mean just yeah. on a scale. If you grade it on a scale, yeah, yeah, they're uh, not. M- they're, maybe they're, not the worst defense in football. We, if, considering Close. their record, that they've won only one game. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, they are they are not the worst defense in football, despite the, the fact they have the worst record in deep and in, in football. Yes. is that fair? It's yes. just like, a culmination like, of everything. It's a comically bad run defense, pass defense, not worst. Team their in their football. pass defense is 16th against the pass over the last four weeks. Part of that is because teams run so successfully on them. Teams are up against them; they don't actually have to throw. But they've played. Play, my point is, is they're not a complete fire dumpster of a disaster on in pass defense they, the sure. way they are in run defense. And so given the fact that, A, Cleveland is rarely run heavy to begin with, um, and it's Watson's first game, they're going to like, you know, he's probably going to be somewhat rusty. My expectation here is it's a heavy Nick Chubb game for a yeah. variety of reasons here. And I also think it'll be an emotional game for the, the Texans and, you know, all the headlines that will surround Watson's return to the NFL. And so uh, I think 
I think it's a closer game than probably people may think. As a result, I think, and, they're, and I definitely think Houston's not going to want Watson to come in there and light him up. So they're going right. to want to continue to establish the run. At the same and time. Regardless of the scoreboard, yeah. I, I'm, going, I'm, I'm keeping yeah. it open on Damian Pierce. I'm keeping it open. Yep, I agree. I think this is the kitchen sink game for Houston. They run Damian Pierce. All right, we're going to go to but break. By the way, I'm going to start just, him there. I'm, I'm, okay, thank you. I'm glad I convinced you. <laughs> but I'll just say after Cleveland, at Dallas, home to Kansas City, Bad. at Tennessee, Bad. right, no, I'm home not to starting. Jacksonville. <laughs> I'm just, but I'm just saying, like, he's done. This, this, this may be your last week. I'm just something to think about. If I'm in a dynasty league where my trade deadline is still open, you know, <laughs> right. and you and you're going for it this year. Sure. He may be an interesting uh, right. trade. We're going to break. When we come back, fantasy playoff schedules. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.